The human torch was denied a bank loan. The arsonist has oddly shaped feet. Don't act like you're not impressed. This is a story of a dancer named Ron and his perilous desire for the role of Queen Swan. Though a gifted ballerina, his temperament was meek, obsessed with perfection and fixated on technique. Commitment to his craft was a source of isolation and a deep need to please left him prone to emulation. But the greatest difficulty in connecting with others was the fact that he still lived at home with his mother. Vicariously living through Ron's every move, she endowed him the belief that is worth he had to prove. Obsessive and oppressive with a presence parasitic, her overbearing nature rivaled Ron's inner critic. To cope with limitations that had been internalized, Ron retreated to his mind and was prone to fantasize, but fantasy would soon invade reality with the changing of the guard in the dance company. The prima ballerina had been forced to retire, and auditions for her role were about to transpire. The season would commence with the classic Swan Lake, giving Ron the opportunity to catch his big break. Naturally epitomizing in a sense of grace, his white swan performance was undoubtedly an ace, but he struggled to embody the black swan sheen, and it jeopardized his chance to be crowned swan queen. While there was no denying Ron's dashing good looks and formidable collection of leather-bound books, his sensual nature was so deeply barricaded that the company director would need to be persuaded. I want to be perfect. All dolled up with bright red lips, Ron tried to plead his case, but the moment was eclipsed by a scandalous kiss that ended in a bite. In a flash, Ron was seen in a whole new light. The cast list confirmed that his dream had come true, and he quickly called Mother to share the happy news. But the thrill of being chosen proved a momentary bliss, drowned out by the sound of paranoia's hiss. The problematic nature of boundaries blurred meant he'd always have to wonder if the role was truly earned. Compounding his fears, now spreading like a cancer, was the threatening presence of a brand new dancer. A San Diego native with cinnamon-smelling hair, Veronica Corningstone had a certain flair. Often pointing out her effortless charm, the director's goading reinforced Ron's alarm. A rival or a role model, Ron could not decide, and his contradicting thoughts would continue to collide. Was the role truly his, or would he be replaced? He seemed to be caught in a never-ending chase. Veronica would grow to be a source of fascination, prompting feelings that defied all categorization. Do I love you? Do I hate you? Do I just want to be you? That she made his heart race is the only thing that he knew. Ron's body bore the signs of emotions repressed and dark hallucinations had begun to manifest. Imprisoned by his mind and itching for release, he clawed and scratched but could not find peace. Insisting that he hide his mutilated skin, Ron's mother was blind to the larger war within. The director as well had chosen to ignore the devastating signs of a mental tug of war. Constantly demanding Ron let himself go, but how to take the note Ron simply did not know. A paradox arises in trying not to try. Effort contradicts and the goal is nullified. Striving in vain and slipping in despair, Ron failed to subdue the impulse to compare. Veronica's passion so effortlessly burning, he became overcome with insatiable yearning. Plagued by an ambition with no outlet to be found, the tension reached a climax in a trip to Pleasure Town. Hearts open wide and bodies spread equaled no longer co-workers, but instead co-people. But all that arises will eventually pass away, as Ron discovered when he awoke the next day. Alone in his bed with no sign of Corningstone, the afternoon delight became a troubling morning woe. He's gonna put Corningstone on! Ron raced to the stage, but rehearsal had begun. There she was in his place. The damage had been done as he watched her move untethered and free. He twisted and squirmed in the grip of envy. He could take no more of this never-ending quest. Every minute, every second, a tumultuous test. Entrenched in the fog of his own derision, it was in that moment Ron was struck by a vision. Well, that escalated quickly. Witnessing his future, Ron finally awakened to the ludicrous nature of the task he'd undertaken. Constantly contorting to conform to a mold, but how can any swan be so pigeonholed? If a shadow implies the presence of a light, can one delineate between black and white? The notion of the one is dependent on the other, as day implies night and a child implies a mother. If the seemingly separate are in fact intertwined, then the truth is that reality cannot be confined to restrictive definitions or isolated traits, for life is a spectrum of fluctuating states. Suddenly aware of this non-duality, Ron couldn't help but laugh at his own absurdity. Seeking to be completed by competing for a role, he failed to notice he was already whole. Forget letting go, it was time to let be, and in his surrender rose Swan Burgundy. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I'm kind of a big deal. 
transcending the world of relativity, I reside in the space where swans fly free. Now, don't get too attached to what you simply see. I am only a depiction of a shade of burgundy, an expression of the thing, but not the thing itself, just as money only paper merely symbolizes wealth. The way things are and the way they are described are two very different things when closely analyzed. To label is to measure. When we measure, we apply a selective point of view that limits what we spy. I offer you a pointer toward another way of seeing that looks beyond the human and recognizes being. Swan burgundy, swan burgundy. Finally endowed with a vision unified, Ron's inner agony had become pacified. Rather than producing insecurity and rancor, he came to see his swans as a team of co-anchors. Single points of view, but not the whole story. In the same way a map is not the territory, he could take on any shade as he twirled and pranced. For he was not the dancer, he was actually the dance. An energy, a movement, an expression of the soul. Completely unattached to titles or roles. Grateful for the darkness that led him to the light, Ron embraced all he was and at last took flight.